Turbocharging is the efficient way of creating boost for a simple reason. It reuses the flow of exhaust fumes to make your car go faster. There is only one downside and that's the freaking turbo lag. A supercharger solves this problem, although it does consume some power to make it, which is why it is not as popular. It is still used today, but I believe there must be at least one car on this list you have not heard of before. Lancia Rally 037 The 037 was the middle race car model by Lancia between the Stratos and Delta S4. It was loosely based on the Lancia Monte Carlo, although the engine was turned 90 degree for a longitudinal layout. The supercharger was chosen instead of the turbo for better throttle response fitting the twin cam long stroke Fiat engine. Alpina B7 Previously available as both a short and long version, the Alpina B7 had the most powerful engine amongst the E65 and E66 7 series. The 4.4 litre engine was reworked and was paired to centrifugal supercharger. Not really a common step in the case of BMW, unless we speak about external tuners. Volkswagen Polo G40 When you spot a G40 or G60 marked Volkswagen, from now on you will know that it has a supercharger. These use a scroll type compressor with displacer spirals 40 or 59.5 mm deep. There are two spirals, one is stationary, the housing, the other, the displacer, eccentrically moves by a crankshaft driven belt. The Polo G40, which had a smaller type, was quite a fast car with a top speed of 121 miles per hour. Audi S4 TFSI Turbo Fuel Stratified Injection I mean, what the fuck Audi? So apparently the Germans made a TFSI marked S4 which does not even have a turbo but a supercharger. Go look, it says so in the engine bay. Shouldn't we call it an SFSI engine instead? Never mind, they did it. It stands out and makes it even cooler. The new one has gotten its turbo back. Mini Cooper S. I don't hear a lot of good words about the new Turbo JCW, but the older one, that's a joy to ride, they say. 
Although it was just a Cooper S, not the JCW, they compare them like the GT3 versus the 911 Turbo. The supercharged unit is older and not as refined, but provides immediate torque and that may be the key factor. <laughs> Aston Martin DB7 The V12 has been a symbol of Aston Martin for the last few decades. It often overshadows any other engines no matter how great they are. You may have not known that in the DB7 they installed an inline 6 engine supercharged by an Eaton M90 twin screw unit. It only provided decent power, not to endanger the V12, but it had a strong low end torque. Mercedes-Benz SLK 32 AMG Sharing the engine with the Chrysler Crossfire SRT6, the SLK platform is quite heavy. Despite this, it has reasonable power, so it can be really fast in a straight line. The M112 engine is commonly known as the 3.2L V6 compressor and was also used in the C32 AMG model, besides the Crossfire. Volkswagen Corolla G60 Using the same type of supercharger as the Polo G40, the 60mm G ladder was also installed in the old Golf and Passat. Only the Corolla was the best looking of them and combined with a low weight, the top speed exceeded 135 miles per hour. Let's just assume this is the next best after the VR6. Nissan March Super Turbo The March Super Turbo is a tiny car. It doesn't have a lot of power, but it also weighs close to nothing. For the production series, they homologated the race version, which was made for 1600cc racing series. As the original engine was a 1 liter, they made the bore narrower to create the 930cc MA09 ERT engine. Multiplying it by the force induction coefficient of 1.7, it just fit in the regulations. By the way, the supercharger was bypassed once the turbo got spooled up. <laughs> 